catch me hollering at the moon. What's up guys and welcome back to Park Pros. Today we have some coaster news out of Adventureland in Altoona, Iowa. If you recall, about a month ago, the park suddenly began the removal of their 1990 Hopkins Looper, the Dragon, somewhat out of the blue and without a public announcement. When the news broke, Adventureland posted this teaser image with the caption, coming in 2021, and then a few days later posted an additional teaser with the words Dragon Slayer and the same image spinning upside down. Two weeks ago, Red Track and Gray Supports were spotted at the park that were consistent with SNS's 40 Freespin coaster model. And yesterday, we finally got the official announcement that in 2021, Adventureland will be adding a 40 Freespin named Dragon Slayer. In this video, I'll give you guys my overall thoughts and analysis on the addition of Dragon Slayer and what I think it means for the future of Adventureland. First, I want to give a big shout out to Coaster Nation, who came up with this pretty accurate looking mock-up of what Dragon Slayer will look like. I'll leave a link to their full video in the description. For those not familiar with SNS's 40 Freespin coasters, the standard model stands 120 feet tall with a length of just over 1000 feet. The main feature of the ride is the free spinning aspect of the trains, which allows riders to spin upside down as they go through the vertical track, based on factors such as gravity and the weight of the riders. The free spin models at the Six Flags parks each cost about $7 million, so I'm guessing that's about the price that Adventureland paid. Right off the bat, I want to say that I'm personally not the biggest fan of 40 free spins. I've been on three of these coasters, and they're typically rides I just hit once to get the credit. They're not bad coasters, and in most cases, they're very smooth and actually give off some really intense moments. Most coaster enthusiasts I know are actually pretty big fans of the free spins, and they seem to be pretty well received by the general public as well. But I just find them to be kind of gimmicky, especially at the Six Flags parks. With that being said though, for a small family park like Adventureland, a 40 free spin is a really good addition. I've said this in previous videos, but before 2019, Adventureland's coaster lineup was extremely outdated, outside of the monster. Adding Dragon Slayer is another great stepping stone for Adventureland in building up and rounding out their coaster lineup, and it'll give them a completely unique experience to the park and the region. While this may not be the RMC Raptor or inverted coaster that a lot of people were hoping for, Removing an unpleasant coaster like Dragon and replacing it with a crowd pleaser like a 40 free spin is certainly a net positive for the park. I hope that with the awesome name Dragon Slayer that the park goes out of their way to add some castle theming to the queue and loading station, maybe similar to what you see on the monster. I think the main reason people may be disappointed in this edition is because a 40 free spin is a model that takes up a very small plot of land and the area that Dragon occupied is prime real estate over the lagoon and smack dab in the middle of the park. There's no question that an RMC Raptor or a New Age Vacoma would have been a better pick if the park was looking for a headlining centerpiece in this area, but I think this area where Coaster Nation is projecting Dragon Slayer to go, tucked into the back corner of the lagoon right next to the break run of Tornado, makes a ton of sense. I seriously doubt that Adventureland would take this small footprint coaster and put it right into the middle of the lagoon, wasting the open space around it. If they put Dragon Slayer in the corner like this, it gives them plenty of room for expansion in the area surrounding the lagoon down the line. And the park has actually placed a red dragon figure in the area next to the Skyride stop, which is presumably where the coaster's entrance would go in this scenario. And I do think that Adventureland has something in mind for the rest of the lagoon area in the future. It could definitely still be one of the coasters that we've speculated about before, but I also think there's a certain type of ride that would be a great fit here. Ever since Monster replaced the River Rapids log ride in 2016, park locals have been clamoring for another log flume or water-based attraction at the park. With the lagoon area presumably still being available, this would be a prime spot for a new water ride. The River Rapids log ride was arguably the most popular ride in the park before it was shut down, so I think adding a newer age log flume or River Rapids ride would be a surefire hit for the park. I think we could see a water ride built in the lagoon as soon as 2022, 
but if they're planning on adding a new coaster there, I wouldn't expect that until 2023 at the earliest. Overall, I think Dragon Slayer is going to be a big hit for Adventureland. It'll probably end up being the second most popular coaster in the park behind Monster, and I'm sure that the general public is going to eat it up. Do I think it's the best coaster Adventureland could have added for this price? No, but for a small family owned park, it's definitely a very strong addition. And adding three large steel coasters in the span of five years is a huge accomplishment for Adventureland. They've been significantly upping their game the last few years, and they're really starting to make a name for themselves in the Midwest coaster scene. Dragon Slayer is a winner in my book, and I'll be excited to get back to Adventureland in 2021 to check it out. Those are my thoughts on Adventureland's new for 2021 coaster. If you've made it this far, please be sure to drop a like on the video and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. As always, thank you guys for checking out the video, and we'll see you all next time.